Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to this week's roundup powered by Motorsport Week. Now I've got seven stories in total for you today and towards the end of the video I will go over the results from Friday practice as well. But first up, Valtteri Bottas has dismissed reports claiming he could be replaced mid-season at Mercedes by George Russell, calling the rumours BS. Earlier this week, the Daily Mail, yeah, claimed that the team was losing faith with the Finn and there was unrest at the factory with a source allegedly from inside Mercedes saying Bottas is, quote, not up to it, which was made clear by the job we saw Russell do in Bahrain. However, when asked by the media about the reports ahead of this weekend's Spanish Grand Prix, Bottas affirmed he had a contract in place until the end of the season and went on to rubbish the rumours. I know that I'm not going to be replaced in the middle of the season. As a team, we don't do that. I have a contract for this year. I think there is just only one team that does that kind of thing in Formula 1 and we are not that team. So, no pressure from my side. We know how things are. There is BS around. That's part of the sport. My full focus is on this year and now because that's all that matters and normally that will bring a good future. Toto Wolff has also had his say on the rumour describing it as nonsense and adding that Bottas is a good driver and is able to compete with anyone in the field. So Bottas and Wolf have both confirmed what most of us already probably knew when it came to this claim, and that is that it is complete and total rubbish. What else did we expect from the Daily Mail? Max Verstappen wants the FIA to police track limits more consistently going forward into the rest of 2021 and beyond. Track limits have been, to many people's delight, the talk of most races so far this year, and were enforced at all circuits, but especially at those with a lot of tarmac runoff like Bahrain and Portimao. However, race stewards have also been making tweaks to the initial guidelines throughout race weekends, which has caused confusion for some and led to a lot of frustration. And whilst the Dutchman does understand that circuits have to cater for multiple different series, not just F1, he feels the sport needs more consistency on how the limits of the circuit are defined. We need to find a solution. I understand some tracks we race together with MotoGP and they want different curbs. But I think we need a middle way that works for both because our cornering speed, we can abuse the whole track with the grip we have, which just makes it really difficult to judge proper track limits. I think it is sometimes a bit confusing looking from the outside where some places you can run on the curb, some places are policed on the white line. I think we can make it a lot better by making sure there is a hard limit where you go off a curb or whatever. Verstappen added the reason for his issues with limits in the opening rounds in the sense that he has had a fastest lap deleted and missed out on pole to name a couple is because he is pushing so hard to try to beat Mercedes when they are not on the same pace and would rather try to find the limit than just sit back and follow them home saying quote I don't settle for second or third. And this story is the topic for this week's question how would you like to see track limits please going forward perhaps gravel at every corner maybe a hard rule where the white line is the limit. Or would you prefer that the FIA didn't bother with track limits at all? You can let me know your thoughts on that or indeed any of the stories featured today in the comments section down below. Lando Norris says he's enjoying the extra responsibility that comes at McLaren this year due to him being the most experienced driver within the team. Norris is enjoying a very strong start to his third season in F1, having taken three top five finishes in the opening races, including, of course, that podium at Imola. And whilst new teammate Daniel Ricciardo is the most experienced of the two overall, he is only in his first season with McLaren and has struggled to match the Brits so far in 2021. And Norris feels that the increased responsibility that falls on him this season has also benefited him so far. Something that has changed for this year is the role that I have more within the team, more because of the difference between the drivers. This year, Daniel comes in with a lot more experience in different teams and within F1, but I have a lot more experience with McLaren and working within the team. I have a bigger role, more responsibility with some things such as the development, the knowledge of the team, which is something that Daniel can't add. So I have had to step up a little bit more and help the team push forward in this area and use my knowledge from there. Norris, who currently sits third in the Drivers' Championship, added that his bigger role has helped to boost his confidence as a driver. Meanwhile, Ricardo has said that whilst he is focused on himself, he does take some comfort in knowing that he isn't the only driver to be struggling within a new team this year and fully expects the total relaxed state to come once he is comfortable in the car and understands it better. Lewis Hamilton has been awarded this year's Laureus Award and has become the first ever person to receive the new Athlete Advocate of the Year Award to add to his breakthrough award in 2008 and the Sportsman of the Year Award which he shared with Lionel Messi last year. Hamilton, who has been pushing for greater equality within motorsport and indeed the wider world, 
described the award as incredible, saying that it's been a difficult year for so many, and he was heartened in seeing, quote, the power of our collective voices spark new conversations and change. Sebastian Vettel is looking forward to giving the new Turn 10 layout at Barcelona a go this weekend, but whilst he's excited to see what the new corner has to offer, there is one more big change he'd like to see the circuit make in future, and that surprise, surprise, is removing the final chicane. Vettel would like to see the return of the old layout around the final two turns, and that was backed up by both Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso, who believe it would be good to at least trial them again, with Sainz adding that he doesn't believe overtaking has improved since the chicane was introduced. And Alonso added to that by saying that the drivers just want to maximise the potential of an F1 car and the aero around the faster final two turns, but also accepts the chicane was added on safety grounds initially and that is still applicable now. Monaco's government has given its approval for a limited number of fans to attend the Monaco Grand Prix later this month. A grandstand capacity of 7,500 people per day is to be allowed and that works out at around about 40% of the circuit's usual capacity. On top of that, 3,000 fans will be able to attend on the Friday when the support categories are racing. And for those following Formula E, 6,500 fans will be allowed to watch this weekend's e pre from the grandstand. But sadly for those of us who want to take our yachts down to the harbour to watch the Formula E, sorry guys, but we're only going to be allowed a boat capacity of 12 people per vessel. Oh, doesn't that suck? And just in case you missed it in yesterday's preview, we should see 1,000 fans at the Barcelona circuit this Sunday. And Roman Grosjean will get the chance to carry out a final farewell F1 test next month thanks to Mercedes. Grosjean, who actually visited the Mercedes factory back in March for a seat fitting and simulator day, will carry out some demonstration laps in Lewis Hamilton's W10 at the French Grand Prix on June 27th. He will then stay on at the circuit to take part in a specially organised test in the 2019 car on the Tuesday following the race. The Frenchman is excited to get back behind the wheel of an F1 car and describe the chance of driving Mercedes as, quote, a special opportunity. Toto Wolff added that he is happy to support Grosjean and that he and the team wanted to make sure that his final memories of the sport would be good ones behind the wheel of a title-winning car. Right then, let's have a look at the results from Friday practice, starting, of course, with FP1. Valtteri Bottas topped the morning session with a 118.504, 25 laps on the board. One hairy moment for him, though, as he came close to hitting the back of Carlos Sainz at the final chicane. Just about avoided him, though. The Finn was 0.033 clear of Max Verstappen in second place with Lewis Hamilton in third. Lando Norris was fourth for McLaren, looking strong again with Ferrari in fifth and sixth using the medium tyre. And that is the same C2 compound that they struggled on in Portugal. So some important laps there for them. Pierre Gasly was 7th for Alfa Tauri with Sebastian Vettel in 8th and Sergio Perez down in 9th for Red Bull. However, his flying lap on a soft tyre was compromised by Daniel Ricciardo in the final sector. So that could explain some of the pace deficit there. Lance Stroll, 10th in the Aston Martin. And look at that there, 9 tenths of a second between the top 10. More of that, please. Yuki Tsunoda, 11th place for Alfa Tauri with Esteban Ocon, the first of the Alpines in 12th. And then we've got Antonio Giovinazzi in 13th, Daniel Ricciardo down in 14th. Not sure if there's a reason for that. Didn't see anything, but let me know in the comments section. Fernando Alonso, 15th place. And then we've got Nicholas Atifi, 16th place, ahead of Roy Nassani, who was in for George Russell this morning. With Mick Schumacher, 18th, Robert Kubitz, and 19th, taking Raikkonen's place in FP1. He brought out a red flag during the session, though, having spun at turn 10 and beached it in the gravel. And 20th place, Nikita Mazepin, 22 laps on the board, and he had a spin at the exit of turn 8, but did get going again. As for FP2, it was fairly uneventful compared to the morning session, if, I suppose, practice is ever eventful, but you know what I mean. Lewis Hamilton topped the afternoon session with a 118.170, just over a tenth clear of Valtteri Bottas. Charles Leclerc was third for Ferrari, looking much better on the soft tyre, with Esteban Ocon fourth. And teammate Fernando Alonso in fifth place. Yes, I know it's only Friday practice, but Alpine definitely had a far better afternoon than it did morning. Pierre Gazzi, sixth with teammate Yuki Tsunoda right behind him in seventh place. Carlos Sainz, eighth in the second Ferrari. And then we've got the Red Bulls of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, ninth and tenth. Now, Perez just seemed to be struggling for pace, but Max Verstappen ended up aborting his flying run on the soft tyre after running wide at turn 10, which of course is why his fastest lap is on the medium tyre. Sebastian Vettel, 11th, 12th for Lando Norris in 13th for Antonio Giovinazzi with Lance Stroll in 14th. 
nine and a half tenths of a second covering the top 14 drivers and just over a second covering the top 16. Again, yes, it's only Friday. It'll be fascinating to see, though, if this carries over into qualifying because there could be some teams who you might expect to get through to Q3 on the medium tyre that might be a little bit nervous of those midfield teams on the soft tyre. Roll on tomorrow, eh? George Russell, 17th place for Williams, 18th for Nicholas Latifi, and then we've got the two Haas boys of Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin, 19th and 20th. That is it for this week's roundup then, but don't forget to let me know how you'd like F1 to please track limits or your thoughts on any of today's stories in the comments section down below. Now I will be back live once again on Sunday with Dan and Stuart for some immediate reaction to the Spanish Grand Prix. But in the meantime, if you did enjoy this video, then please do leave a like as it really helps out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.